Welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church. We gather in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every Sunday throughout the season of Lent, we get to hear incredible stories from Scripture. Last Sunday, it was the woman at the well. Next Sunday, we'll hear the story of Lazarus being raised from the dead. Today, we get to hear how Jesus gave sight to a man who was blind. May these stories from Scripture open our eyes to see God's presence in our lives. May these stories expand our vision and inspire us in our journey as followers of Jesus. Speaking of journeys, you might be wondering why I have luggage with me today, because I'm going to take you all on a journey. Right after we sing our opening hymn, I'm going to hop in my car and take you on a field trip to church camp. Church camp is one of those places where, for many of us, our eyes of faith get opened wide. So let's sing together, Be Thou My Vision, and then I'll see you at church camp. made it to church camp. Here I am at Lutherdale. Unfortunately, it's a pretty gray day today, so the majority of our worship service will take place inside. But in between rainstorms, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could hear our gospel from the great outdoors? The Holy Gospel according to John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth, his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man or his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, 
he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and he washed, and he came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, it's someone who looks like him. But he kept saying, I am the man. And they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed, and I received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? Where is Jesus? And he said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. The Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes that were opened. And he said, He is a prophet. Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, Jesus asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, Who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one who is speaking with you is he. And the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Welcome to Luther Now. We are glad you are joining us here this weekend. I'm Pastor Tracy Polzin. I am the executive director here, and we are thankful not only that you are joining us here this weekend and to be in person with some of you on Sunday, but also for your partnership in ministry. Uh, Luther Now partners with congregations from the Greater Milwaukee Synod, the Metro Chicago Synod, the Northern Illinois Synod, and the South Central Synod of Wisconsin. And all of these partners together help the mission of Lutherdale come to life. And so we thank you for that partnership and we're glad to be with you and hope that someday you'll join us here at camp as well. We have programs for people of all ages and stages of life. Now, you may or may not know that uh, your pastor Pete and I have lived in the same home. Uh, when I served as director at Fortune Lake, I lived in the house that he grew up in and then returned to as program director. And um, this is a story that he has not heard probably, I don't think, but um, he lived large in my brain at certain times of life. So as a camp director, I would often leave the house early in the morning before breakfast and not return again until late, late into the evening. And because I was gone so long, I usually didn't bring a flashlight with me when I left in the morning and my phone was usually dead by the time I was coming home at night, which meant that there were two paths from camp to the camp house. And so one path led from the dining hall past the maintenance shed to the house. And there was always light from the dining hall until the maintenance shed. And you'd get to the behind of the maintenance shed and it would be pitch black and you would have to make it from there to the house and I could usually do that without a problem but there's another path that left from camp that um, went from the house if you were leaving from the house you went along the side of the garage along the fence of the backyard and then down this trail where it met up with another trail that led to the back of the arts and crafts building into the main part of camp. And sometimes I would try to come home that route and you would get from the main trail and have to find the spot that it broke off to the house and 
Usually I could get there, but I would get about four steps off the path and would be absolutely terrified that I was moving in the wrong direction. Now, I don't know if this story is true or if it was some summer staff messing with me, but somebody told me that one of the summers that Pete was living there as a program director, he got terribly lost trying to get back to the house. And so I would be on this trail looking for any sign of light, trying to feel with my feet where the path was versus the woods were. And the thought would come into my brain, okay, but Pete grew up in this house and he got really lost in the woods. I am really going to get lost in these woods. And I remember one summer being um, just stuck in the place where I couldn't move. And all I remember is that earlier that summer we'd heard both the wolves and the coyotes and even a bobcat and thinking something is going to jump out of me, something is going to eat me. Everyone in my family is already asleep and so it won't even be until morning that somebody notices that I am gone and being absolutely frozen in fear and thinking, Pete got lost. Surely I am going to get lost. I always made it eventually home, as you can see today. I did eventually get smart and put a solar light in that back area so that I could go towards the light and then once I got to the solar light could see the light of the house and make it around. But I remember not only being frozen in fear and the absolute terror of all of the what ifs that run through your head and the, the frozenness, the being stuck in fear, but also the great joy and relief of finally seeing the light, of knowing that I was going to make it, and how free you feel when you know that you are home and you are safe and all is well in the world again. Today we have in our uh, gospel story, we have a, a story about a man who was born blind. And um, he is healed by Jesus on the Sabbath, and there are all sorts of questions that roll about um, both who that man was, and why he was born blind, and who is Jesus, and who is supposed to act. And in our story, the man <clears throat> is uh, given his sight back, he is healed, and then he suddenly becomes, as he's healed, he sees his mission to be sent out and to be a disciple of Christ. And he grasps um, what Jesus has done for him. And the religious leaders at the time are more caught up in how Jesus did it and if it was proper than being able to see what was going on in the world. And I think for a lot of us, we become like the lost people in the world. We become stuck. We miss what's going on around us. We get stuck in what is holding us back. Um, wondering where the path is, where we are being led, um, instead of seeing the world with the eyes of faith. And so that is what ultimately this man born blind um, has the vision of eyes of faith. And he is able to see what God has done for him. And as he does, he's able to see what God can do in the world. He is healed um, in this kind of gross way where Jesus takes some spit and some mud and rubs it on his eyes and then tells him to go wash in the waters of Saloa. And uh, we are all washed in the waters of baptism. And as we are washed in those waters of baptism, our vision is uh, a vision of faith to allow us to see who is missing, who is not included, who is part of God's mission in the world that we need to include that we need to share the grace and mercy that God has given us with them. One of the things I love about camp is being able to witness that happen all the time. That kids that don't fit anywhere else fit here. That kids that aren't leaders normally suddenly can lead. They're given the space and opportunity to be loved, to be known, to be accepted, and in that, they suddenly become who they are called to be as baptized children of God. And uh, one story I'll share with you um, didn't happen here, but happened at Porch Lake. We have a similar program here at Lutherdale for adults with disabilities. 
and we had a camper that would come every Sunday or every summer. We'll name him Paul in this story. But this man loved, 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 loved the talent show. And he would carry with him a notebook and he would uh, have that notebook with him all year round at home and he would count down in that notebook and be able to tell you on any day of the, of the year how many days it was until the next talent show. And when he would get to camp, he would start counting down the hours. And of the day of the talent show, he would count down the minutes. And then as we were getting closer, he would count down the seconds. He loved the talent show. And it wasn't because it was the world's greatest talent show. It was because it was the one time of year that he was seen for who he was and that he was seen as a person of value and that his friends were seen as people of value. And that is what we are called to do, to look at each person through this eyes of faith and see who God has called them and created them to be and to look at the world and say, where is God calling us to be in this world? Where is God calling us to find those that maybe don't fit, to see what difficult situations that might be out there that God's grace and love could help be a part of. And so we are called, washed in the waters of baptism, to be part of God's mission in the world, to be like that man born blind who was then healed, sent out into the world to share God's love and grace and mercy with all. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm Pastor Pete, as you already know, and I'm here with... Grace Crevere, and I'm the Program Director at Lutherdale. Just like Pastor Tracy and I have known each other for a long time, Grace and I have also known each other for a long time because of our connection through church camp. And we're going to sing a song called Hymn for Church Camp. It's one of our favorite songs, and we invite you to sing along.
sustained by God's abundant mercy. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for all of God's creation. Eternal God, as the blind man had his sight restored, you open our eyes to see the world around us. Guide us to see ways that we can open our hearts and minds to assist those in need, those who are suffering, and those who cry out for justice. Inspire us by your love as we strive for justice and peace in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, by your word you have made all things. Teach us to perceive the beauty of your creation. From the snow under my feet to the lake behind me. From the grandest mountain range to the smallest springtime bud. We give you thanks for your creation that is revealed in church camps. Camps like Lutherdale, LOMC, Fortune Lake, and all other places. Continue to bless the ministries of camp directors, camp staff, camp counselors, and volunteers as they pass on your love to people of all generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Powerful God, you anoint kings and establish rulers. Guide the work of heads of state and all elected officials. Help our leaders to see the beauty of diversity so that we can grow and learn from each other's differences. Encourage them to lead with justice and to remove the barriers that impede the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, you lead us beside still waters and you restore our souls. Embrace all who feel lonely or excluded and continue to walk next to those who are fighting battles that only you know about. We continue to pray for all who are in need of your healing touch, those on our church prayer list and those on our personal prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We send you forth with the benediction, which is a call and response sung benediction. I invite you to sing the parts that grace sings. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Spirit. In the name of the Spirit. The three in one. The three in one. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Live God's count. Blessings go with you. God's blessings go with you. And give you peace. And give you peace. Go in peace. I'll see you back at church. Duncan, send us forth with open the eyes of my heart. Yeah.
Power. 